Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and co-host for God's Break the Republic Dirty Uncle Sam Radio on RBN Network. I wanted to draw tonight your attention of some things about the Massachusetts situation where the Attorney General apparently thinks that she creates laws. So I wanted to go over a couple of things for you and cover that and let you know what's really going on across our union in the different states and why all these unlawful gun laws are going through and it seems as if they have just lost their mind. They really have not. It is a planned situation. So, over here, Attorney General Mara Healy. Uh, by the way, her press office is 617-727-2543. And um, this is the official site for Massachusetts.gov, but it's www.mass.gov if you wanted to find what I am speaking about, just in case the link doesn't work, because a lot of times when I do link, um, for some odd reason, YouTube or whomever makes it where they don't work. So that's where you can find it. And let me get back to the topic. Attorney General Healy announces enforcement of ban on copycat assault weapons. In the wake of Orlando mass shootings, Attorney General Healy warns gun makers and dealers against selling prohibited assault weapons in Massachusetts clarifies what constitutes a copycat weapon. General Mara Healy today issued a notice to all gun sellers and manufacturers in Massachusetts warning that her office is stepping up enforcement of the state's assault weapons ban, including a crackdown on the sale of copycat weapons. The enforcement notice clarifi clarifies what constitutes a copy or duplicate weapon under the assault weapons ban. Copies or duplicates of banned assault rifles, including copies of the Colt AR-15 and the Kalashnikov. AK-47 are prohibited by the Massachusetts assault weapons ban. Despite the law, an estimated 10,000 copycat assault weapons were sold in Massachusetts last year alone. <clears throat> the gun industry has openly defied our laws here in Massachusetts for nearly two decades, said the Attorney General Healy. And that ends today. We have a moral and legal responsibility to ensure the combat style weapons are off our streets and out of our out of the hands of those who would use them to kill innocent people. Increasingly these guns are the weapon of choice for mass shooters and we will do everything we can to prevent the kinds of tragedies here that have occurred in places like Orlando, San Bernardino, Newtown, and Aurora. Massachusetts assault weapons ban mirrors the federal ban that expired in 2004 and it prohibits the sale of specific and name brand weapons explicitly bans copies or duplicates of those weapons gun manufacturers however make a market of what they call state compliant versions with minor tweaks to various parts of the weapon copycat guns are sold for example without a flash suppressor or with a fixed instead of a folding stock these changes do not make the weapon any less lethal and the weapons remain illegal now, I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'll leave a link in the screen below. Any idiotic person who believes that a folding stock makes any tool, which is an AR-15, an AK-47, uh, a Smith & Wesson uh, revolver, a 9mm Beretta, uh, you name it is an idiot. There is absolutely nothing that happens when it has a folding stock. Let me give you an example. I'm going to give you a different example before I go into the Massachusetts thing. If I buy a car and that car is red and it's a Chevette and it does not have a front bumper Nothing about how that Chevette runs 
It doesn't make it go faster. It doesn't make it go slower. It doesn't make it less lethal. It doesn't make it any different if I add a bumper onto the car. This is the type of idiotic crap that is going on across our country, but there's a reason for it. There's a reason this is going on in our union, and the reason I'll expose in a minute. However, I'm going to go to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as you can see. I'm going to start with Article 4, because I think this is important for individuals, especially my Massachusetts brothers and sisters, to know this. The people of this commonwealth have the sole and exclusive right of governing themselves as free, sovereign, and independent state, and do and forever, hereafter, shall exercise and enjoy every power, jurisdiction, and right which is not, or may not hereafter be by them expressly delegated to the United States of America and Congress assembled. Article 5. All power residing originally in the people and being derived from them, the several magistrates and officers of government vested with authority, whether legislative, executive, or judicial, are their substitutes and agents and are at all times accountable to them. Accountable to who? Accountable to the people. Not the other way around. Article 6. No man, nor corporation, or association of men have any other title to obtain advantages or particular and exclusive privileges distinct from those of the community than what arises from the consideration of services rendered to the public. And this title being in nature neither hereditary nor transmittable to children or descendants or relations by blood, the idea of a man born a magistrate lawgiver or judge is absurd and unnatural. So now I'm going to go to Article 8. In order to prevent those who are vested with authority from becoming oppressors, the people have a right at such periods in such manner as they shall establish by their frame of government to cause their public officers to return to private life and to fill up vacant places by certain and regular elections and appointments. I would suggest, and I will look into it myself, finding out about recall of this woman who is committing treason against the people. So I'm going to go down now to Article 17. The people, wait a minute, it didn't just say the government. The people, you know, the ones that these elected officials, which I just read, are subordinate to. They are employees. They are not our masters. This woman has usurped her authority. The people have the right to keep and bear arms for the common defense. And as in time of peace, armies are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be maintained without consent of the legislature, and the military power shall always be held in an exact subordination to the civil authority and be governed by it. This does not say militia. This says the people have the right to keep and bear arms for the common defense. So with that said, I'm going to go to Article 20. The power of suspending laws or the execution of the laws ought never to be exercised but by the legislature or by the authority derived from it to be exercised in such particular cases only as the legislature shall expressly provide for. So I'm going to go to the very beginning, because I think it is very important for the preamble to be read. The end of the institution. 
maintenance, and administration of government is to secure the existence of the body politic, to protect it, and to furnish the individuals who compose it with the power of enjoying in safety and tranquility their natural rights and the blessings of life. And whenever these great objects are not obtained, the people have a right to alter the governments and to take measures necessary for their safety, prosperity, and happiness. The body politic is formed by voluntary association of individuals. It is a social compact by which the whole people covenants with each citizen, and each citizen with the whole of the people, that all shall be governed by certain laws for the common good. It is the duty of the people, therefore, in framing a constitution of government to provide for an equitable mode of making laws, as well as for an impartial interpretation and a faithful execution of them, that every man may at all times find his security in them. We, therefore, the people of Massachusetts, acknowledging with grateful hearts the goodness of the great legislator of the universe, in affording us in the course of his providence an opportunity deliberately and peaceably without fraud, violence, or surprise of entering into an original, explicit, and solemn compact with each other, and of the forming of a new constitution of civil government for ourselves and posterity, and devoutly imploring his direction in so interesting a design, do agree upon, ordain and establish the following declaration of rights and frame of government as the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So as you can see, everything she's doing, number one, is unlawful. And Article 1 says it all as well. All men are born free and equal and have certain natural, essential, and unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying and defending their lives and liberties, that of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and fine, that of seeking and obtaining their safety and happiness. Okay, so they have the right to possess, they have the right to protect their property, they have the right to defend their lives. These are unalienable rights that were not given by government. They were given by God, and it was just acknowledged in these constitutions. So the Attorney General puts out her little message to pretend like these quote-unquote copycat weapons just because something has a folding stock or something may have a suppressor or something may have a, <clears throat> a magazine that is a little bit longer, or, or whatever the case may be. It doesn't make the bullet any less deadly. It doesn't matter if it is a 22, a 40 caliber, a 45, a 9 millimeter, a 357. It doesn't matter if you get hit with the bullet in the head, you're just as dead. They know this. This woman is going along with the what I had reported before on the UNODA meeting. The United Nations met to disarm American citizens. This is where I reported on and on. United Nations meet to disarm American citizens while population is focused on ISIS murderer. The meeting was held in New York City, June 6th through the 10th. So I'm going to go over this article real quick. I will leave links in the description box below. While many people across our union are focused upon the murderous acts of a madman in Florida, K 
CARE has called for better gun control. Obama hints at it, Homeland floats it, national security as an excuse to take guns. The NAACP touts almost identical wording. Now we have attorney generals uh, going off note of the article implementing unlawful actions. And we also had the Democrats do the sit-in. The NAACP touts almost identical wording located within the UNODA UNSATT documents. One does have to wonder, is there a much greater agenda at play? Mainstream media have consistently bombarded us with the ISIS mass murderer story, yet have failed to report on issues that affect the whole of the American people. Issues that would cause all of us to be unarmed, leaving us at the mercy of madmen and criminals. I'm speaking about the unalienable rights you were born with which were confirmed in the Second Amendment to the Bill of Rights. Your right to keep and bear arms is being attacked via agreements by an unelected body of individuals wishing to control and disarm we the people, leaving all of us helpless to defend ourselves, as was the case in the Florida massacre, and as was the case in every one of the shootings that that Attorney General quoted. The United Nations held the sixth biannual meeting of the states to consider the implementation of the program of action to prevent, combat, and eradicate the illicit trade in small arms and light weapons in all its aspects. The meeting was held June 6th through the 10th, 2016 in New York City. Located in their draft outcome report are many disturbing findings. Document ACONF 192BMS 2016 of June 10, 2016, titled the Sixth Biannual Meeting of the States to Consider the Implementation of the Program of Action to Prevent, Combat, and Eradicate the Illicit Trade in Small Arms and Light Weapons in All Its Aspects, states the following. In number three, the states reaffirm their respect for and commitment to their obligations under international law and the purposes and principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations as well as those set out in the program of action, including its 8th to 11th preamble paragraphs. Number five, states welcome the progress made in implementing the program of action and the international tracing instruments since their adoption, including on the establishment, strengthening, and enforcement of national laws, regulations, and administrative procedures to prevent the illicit trade and illegal manufacture of small arms and light weapons, the development of national action plans, the establishment of national points of contact, the submission of voluntary national reports, and the strengthening of sub-regional and regional cooperation. This is what you're, you're hearing all through since all this has been going on. This is the cooperation. They also welcome progress made in implementing stockpile management and security, the collection and destruction of illicit small arms and light weapons, the marking of small arms and light weapons, technical training, and information sharing. Yes, this is why they want you to be registered. States reiterated the importance of national laws, regulations, and administrative procedures, interagency coordination ding, 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 and where they exist national action plans to the full and effective implementation of the POA. POA means plan of action, by the way. Number 18, states noted the opportunities new technologies, when available, can offer for enhanced small arms and light weapons stockpile management and security, including through improved marketing and record keeping and for the destruction of surplus small arms and light weapons that they have designated for destruction. States welcome the adoption of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including Sustainable Development Goal, SDG 16. If you do not know what that is, that is UN Agenda 21 on steroids. You need to pull up Agenda 2030. United Nations Agenda 2030. Read it. They admit in this documentation 
when I go a little bit further down, you'll see it. They admit in their own documentation that sustainable development, their plan for you and Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030 or Millennium Goals, whichever one you want to call it, because they keep changing the name because we keep finding them out, cannot be implemented without the disarmament of our people. Number 24, states acknowledged in line with the 2030 agenda that sustainable development can not be realized without peace and security, and that peace and security will be at risk without sustainable development. States noted that the illicit trade in small arms and light weapons has implications for the realization of several sustainable development goals including those related to peace, justice, and strong institutions, poverty reduction, economic growth, health, gender equality, and safe cities and communities. If you don't know those trigger words, please learn them. States underline the importance of the full and effective implementation of the plan of action and the ITI for attaining the Sustainable Development Goal 16 and SDG target 16.4. To ensure that destroyed and deactivated small arms and light weapons are rendered permanently inoperable such that the illicit reactivation is physically impossible and recognizing the value of relevant best practices in this regard. To coordinate as appropriate, here you go, this is what's going on to coordinate, as appropriate, national level implementation of the plan of action with relevant sub-regional, regional, and international instruments and with related issues and processes including disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration, border controls, organized crime, terrorism, urban crime, relevant UN resolutions, and related capacity building initiatives. To take into account complementaries between the plan of action and relevant sub-regional, regional, and global instruments in which member states participate in order to enhance as appropriate national level coordination on the implementation of the plan of action to share best practices in physical stockpile management and security as well as permanent weapons reactivation in order to prevent the diversion of small arms and light weapons to illicit markets, illegal armed groups, terrorists, and other unauthorized recipients including the conflict and post-conflict situations. I want you to pay close attention to illegal armed groups and I want you to pay close attention to unauthorized. It will be explained in a minute. To continually assess national stockpiles for surpluses and to responsibly dispose, preferably through the destruction of small arms and light weapons that no longer meet operational needs. So, politicians such as Obama, Hillary Clinton, and certain factions of mainstream media tried to gloss over the true nature of the UNSATT for years. The American people have been told the UNSATT has nothing to do with disarming the people, nor the eradication of an individual's right to bear arms. These statements have been proven to be false and misleading time and time again by the United Nations' own documentation. See previous articles covered here, here, and here. Located within the United Nations International Small Arms Control Standard, or the ISACS, 03.30 version 1.0, dated on 6-11-2015, titled, The National Regulation of Civilian Access to Small Arms and Light Weapons, Section 6 States. Please pay attention. Regulating Types and Characteristics of Small Arms, 6.1 Prohibitions, 6.11 General, National Law Shall Prohibit Civilians from acquiring, owning, or possessing light weapons, automatic small arms, and armor-piercing ammunition. <clears throat> Ironically, we keep 
seeing a semi-automatic redefined as automatic. The United Nations openly shows within their own reports that they must be successful in disarming the population as a whole in order to establish UN Agenda 21, also known as UN Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Agenda. The people of America must unify together in a joint effort across our union to stop these unelected bodies from destroying our individual, unalienable right to self-defense before it becomes too late. Please contact your representatives, your local sheriffs. Share this information with everyone. So I'm not going to continue to read. I will leave a link in the description box below. Therefore, you will have access to all the official documents and the rest of this article. This article quotes U.S. code as well to be able to stop them. The reality is, and the politicians know this, the police departments that are being targeted right now by criminals. I'm not even going to call them terrorists anymore. Because that word has been so overused. The fact of the matter is, they're criminals. They are individuals, no matter whether they are hired or not, no matter whether it's spontaneous or not, they have no moral standing or standards. They have no respect for life. Self-defense is one thing. Straight murder is another. So now more than ever, our people need to arm themselves. They need to train. They need to be prepared to defend the innocent from those criminals. Police are unable to protect you when every second counts. As proven in the Orlando massacre, and it is not only your duty, it is your right to protect yourself, to protect your community, to protect the innocent. You, not the police, are and always have been the first responders. You know, I don't know why they call them first responders, but the reality is they're not. Because whoever is at the scene is always the ones calling them. They are the second responders. We, the people, on scene are the first responders. And by working together, we can defeat this tyranny now and not tomorrow. We must stand up, stand strong, stand united, and say absolutely not, no more to their gun-grabbing agenda. Federal statistics show more people are killed with hammers, with fists, with feet, than any rifle. Law enforcement knows it. The FBI knows it. This attorney general knows it. She's using it as an excuse. Here in this article, as you can see, all of these links, these are actually links to different information. A lot of them are the actual official UN uh, documents to where you can pull them up. So that, my friends, is truly what this is all about. It's time to say no more. It's time for the people to unite. And that's including lawful law enforcement. Civilians, since the police officers have been targeted. Civilians with those scary little, little copycats and those scary little guns that this Attorney General Healy, who thinks she writes law instead of enforces it, she 
she is putting people's lives in danger. Individuals with the AR-15s, AK-47s, side pistols, whether they be 45s, 9 millimeters, 357s, it doesn't matter, across this union are standing up and actually protecting the police officers, trying to make sure that they are not the next innocent officer to be gunned down. Bikers across America are also doing that. Do not use that political crap and agenda to try to steal the citizens' weapons when we know you, Attorney General, with no doubt in my mind, you have your protection. Whether it is your own weapon or whether you have security. And until you're willing to give up your security and your right to defend yourself, leave the people alone. I would say everybody in the state of Massachusetts, start a recall on Attorney General Healy. According to your Constitution, as I read to you, you have a right to take her out of office. Do it lawfully. Do it peacefully. Find out the exact way that you do the recall and get it done. Show them and send the message that no more will our rights be trampled on by these corrupt, elite politicians that give no two cents of caring about you. Thank you. God bless you. I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more about what is going on. And until next time, Semper Fidelis and good night.